Hey everyone, welcome to Polycosm. This is Omar Chan. Today I have a side quest to share with you guys, and this is going to be relevant to our upcoming concept creation project. Think of this side quest as a sort of a warm up for it. For this episode, we are going to be working on creating an environment based on a character design that I made previously. I personally really like character design, which means I tend to focus on it a lot, which also means I tend to neglect other things like environment design. So coming up with projects like this is a good way for me to motivate myself. I get to draw a character and then I get to come up with an environment where this character is going to live. This is sort of like having your dessert and then your dinner. It, I know it's a bit weird, but it does work for me. So if you struggle with you know, similar motivational problems when it comes to environment design or any other thing, coming up with projects like this might help you as well. Okay, let's get started. And here's the character design that we'll be working with. Before I drew up this guy, I didn't do a lot of research, iterations, sketching or anything like that. Since this project is more about the environment, for the character aspect, I've just let myself have some fun, I've just let my imagination run. I don't want to say too much about the character for now, I'll get into detail a bit later on. All you need to know before we begin is that he's a scavenger and he needs a hideout to live in. I'm gonna start by sketching a rough floor plan sketch. I find this a really good way to generate some ideas for an indoor environment without having to worry about perspective and scale. Especially if you are someone who's just starting to learn about perspective, I highly recommend drawing out floor plans like this first before you start drawing in perspective. You can make changes and generate ideas very quickly this way. This stage doesn't have to be clean, so don't worry about making a pretty drawing. This is just the first step. Next, I'm dropping the sketch into Blender and using it as reference to start blocking things in. We have a video where Christina talks about how to set up reference planes in Blender, so I highly recommend you check that out. I'll be blocking out the environment roughly in Blender to help me with the next stages of the drawing. You can, of course, just start drawing all this stuff from scratch in Photoshop directly, and if you are just learning about perspective, that's probably a good idea. You should probably work on that process. I'll be using a 3D blockout in this case purely to show how this can speed things up for your workflow if you are short on time. This also gives you the luxury of finding a camera angle you like before you start drawing. If you need to make multiple drawings of the same environment from different angles, you can see how this method will save you a bunch of time. This portion is fairly straightforward. I'm drawing by adding and extending single vertices most of the time and then extruding them. Remember to press F with the vertices still selected to fill the geometry. I'm not going to be modeling much here, I want to come up with the designs of these separate elements as I'm drawing, so I'm basically just putting in basic boxes and cylinders. Just enough information that I can later modify with my sketch to create the props that I want. I'm going to create a perspective grid to help me out as well. You can do this by adding a box mesh, scaling that up to cover everything, then adding as many edge loops as you need. Make sure to do this on every axis. Once you're done, add a wireframe modifier to the box and adjust the thickness. I'm going to hide my perspective box and get a viewport render of the environment. Then I'm going to get a shaded viewport render to use as reference later on when I'm doing a simple value pass. Lastly, I hide everything else but my perspective cube and get one final viewport render. Make sure not to move the camera around between these renders and also get your perspective grid render as a transparent one. Okay, let's drop all of this in Photoshop, increase the resolution a bit and start drawing. I decided to sketch in a human figure for proportion here as this is an important aspect to make an environment look believable. In hindsight, I probably should have put some human figures in Blender when I was blocking the environment in, but oh well, lesson learned, time to move on. The 3D blocking gives me base geometry to work with and as I'm sketching, I'm adding and subtracting from this geometry to create more complicated designs. In this sense, drawing is very similar to modeling. You start with big 
and work towards smaller shapes. The perspective grid really helps, especially when I need to add to the geometry as it provides me with the correct guidelines. As I was exporting the render, I've added a wireframe modifier to the walls as well, so they weren't blocking the view. You'll see that as I'm drawing, I add the walls in some parts and cut them out in others to create a cutout diorama style look. This way I can show or hint at what the environment contains in each separate room. A lot of the ideas I came up with during the floor plan sketch start to get fleshed out here. This is our sci-fi scavenger character's home and I wanted it to feel lived in and have a personality. An environment can tell a story, especially about the person who inhabits it. I want this place to make sense and have a personality, have some character to it. So when I was sketching out the floor plan, I was asking myself questions like where is the entrance, where does he sleep or eat or go to the toilet, how does he spend his time, where does he store his salvage. As you answer these questions, you'll realize how the story is shaping up in your mind. This part is really fun, it's very much like role playing putting yourself in this character's shoes and imagining how you decorate your own hideout. The answers you come up with for these questions, they start to shape the hideout but also they hint at the larger world that this character exists in. I knew this guy lived in a sci-fi setting, something more like Star Wars or Firefly. Not super high-tech, just hints of an advanced technology but there is also an element of the old world there. He's a scavenger, surviving on a harsh planet. He has mementos of a past life around him, and he is possibly looking for a way to get off this planet he's stuck on. As he comes in, he has to go through a decontamination chamber, so this means the world outside is hostile or toxic in some way. He's got a gun by his bed, a bug out bag, and a hidden tunnel for escape which means there is danger present for this guy, or someone's possibly hunting him. This is just going to be a line art sketch, but there is so much you can tell and imply just by using line art. This sketch can be taken to a hyper-realistic concept piece later on, but I think the important thing here is to get ideas and the story down before you start worrying about the quality of the concept. As I'm satisfied with the bigger shapes, I'm moving in for smaller details such as wall panels, parts of machinery just laying around, control panels, pipes and cables, things like that. These are just flavoring elements to go over the main concept, so you don't want to overdo them and create a mess. For example, in some parts, I'm hinting at the pipes that are running through the walls by extending them out, but I don't have to do this in every section, just a couple gives the idea without overwhelming the viewer. Composition is still important within the whole concept and each individual room. The way this hideout is organized needs to feel natural. Once I'm happy with the overall sketch, I knock back the opacity on this layer and start going over with my final line art. I'm doing this mostly because I wanted the presentation to look clean. In some cases, I think just the sketch will be enough to give the idea to a client or art director. Even some modelers would be able to work with that. But sometimes you might need to make things look clean and tidy so as not to leave anything unclear. I won't be going for a full color concept here, but once you have a solid base, you can take this as far as you'd like. Once the final line art is done, I'm going to do a very quick shadow pass to give everything some volume. I pull up the reference I created earlier in Blender for this and get to work. Just a quick pass will do. I just need to create a sense of depth and solidity to everything. This is also an opportunity to make sure I haven't missed anything, I didn't forget drawing anything, you know, sometimes I miss stuff. Or maybe I might go in, add a little bit of more detail, a little bit more texturing, things like that. And that's it. Here's the final presentation sheet with some annotations. You know, at the end, looking at the character and the environment next to one another like this makes me realize I think I did succeed at the end of this project. It would have sucked if I 
came up with an environment and you know it looks like this character just does not fit into it but I think he does I think this hideout really looks like it's his hideout I can see this guy living in here you know just coming in from a long day of salvaging stuff takes his decontamination shower gets into his workbench starts working away goes to the kitchen makes himself some coffee you know, and I imagine that it, it kind of works. It really all fits together, so I'm quite happy with the results. And that's us finished with another side quest. This one was a lot of fun and got me all excited about starting our next concept creation project. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. As always, let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.